Good morning. Um, my name is Sachi Gamuto, and on behalf of everyone at Open Forum Europe, it's, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this fourth annual OFE Summit, uh, an open vision for Europe. And uh, we have a very busy schedule, made even busier now, um, and so I'll uh, try to make this, uh, these first uh, opening words short. Firstly, um, I'd like to thank um, Vice President Cruz for, for returning to us this year. Um, last year, um, the Vice President uh, mentioned in her speech that uh, she'd be happy to come back uh, and continue the dialogue with us. And uh, of course, we had to take her up on that. And she's gracious enough to, to accept when we invited her. So we're happy about that. Um, Secondly, I'd like to thank those of you who submitted um, suggestions to us for, for, uh, for topics and speakers that we could include in the program. Um, we've tried to um, in, in integrate some of those suggestions um, and uh, in the future we're looking forward to making this process even more um, uh, sort of uh, interactive. Um, and um, finally, uh, for me, um, I know that uh, uh, from the feedback that we've had in previous years that uh, our event is also uh, appreciated for the opportunities uh, for networking that it provides. So uh, we've uh, planned for coffee breaks in the morning, in the afternoon, uh, a lot, uh, uh, in addition to the lunch break. So uh, I'm looking forward to meeting uh, old friends today and also making new contacts. So I hope you'll do the same and take full advantage of that. Um, Having said that, it's also my duty to say, um, please uh, return promptly into the, this room so that we can start the, the sessions on time. We'll see, we'll have to adjust the schedule slightly now, but uh, probably we'll, um, we'll make the, the sessions slightly tighter. Um, so uh, that's it from me, um, just to start off. And uh, I'd like to hand over to uh, our chief executive, um, Graham Taylor who will talk a little bit more about uh, how the themes of this year's conference fit with, uh, with the overall vision of uh, Open Forum Europe. Um, Graham Taylor <laughs> is a co-founder of Open Forum Europe, uh, which is now in its 10th year. And um, before that, he worked for over 30 years in the IT industry, uh, lastly as a director of ICL. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, Graham Taylor is somebody who speaks his mind uh, quite freely. Um, and uh, since I joined uh, OFE uh, four years ago, uh, this has sometimes been uh, horrifying to me. Uh, and you know what I'm talking about. Um, but mostly I find it refreshing, especially in this Brussels context. So um, please um, welcome one of my heroes, Graham Taylor. Thanks, Sachi. I think everything there was fine, other than the thing about the 30 years, you know, the grey hairs. Um, so at, let me first of all add my personal welcome. So congratulations on actually getting here. Um, I have to say whether it's something about running an open conference, open vision for Europe, on a day when Brussels is closed. So uh, we'll see. Um, as Sachi said, yeah, this is our 10th year. And um, when somebody said to me, yeah, Graham, but you realise you are now mainstream. And that horrified me, because that isn't the IOFE style. You know, we very much set out to be independent, fiercely independent, I have to say, obviously not for profit. Um, and the whole thing, I think, is that we, we really are trying to add value. So one of the things about the summit and, and the briefings that we run is we're trying to create, you know, validate, test some of the ideas, don't just push the same messages and move forward. And so the summit is very much part of that. So... I think we've got a really great speaker lineup for today, and I'm, that gives us a lot of encouragement that people want to come, hopefully today, <laughs> um, but also that we can attract some of the best speakers from the world to, to really just extend some of the thresholds and the thinkings. Um, over the last year, we've, we've continued to develop quite clearly OFE. We've also introduced something I mentioned last year, which is the Open Forum Academy, which is very much our link with academia and the think tanks. So some of the, many of the fellows are here uh, at the events. We had a meeting yesterday, so we actually appointed new, four new fellows yesterday, which is good. 
that organization, that initiative will be running additional briefings, really testing some of the things. So we actually now have two research programs underway, run, one being run uh, with Delft University, looking at the potential impact of competitive standards and how that might affect the market. And we're just uh, completing with the London School of Economics and work jointly funded with the UK government on the to to cost of ownership of open source software. So this really is good unbiased research into the thinking. Um, last year though, we spent a lot of our time at the summit following up on procurement. And that really continues to be very much central to what we're thinking. And Vice President, forgive me for quoting you right at the beginning and say, uh, when you said, we must practice what we promote. Uh, and for us, that is fundamental. You can have fantastic strategies, government strategies, but if we don't deliver through on them, then why are we bothering? So, you know, the statement for me is bad practice in, procure, uh, in procurement, uh, sorry, good practice in procurement will deliver the digital agenda, but bad practice will destroy it. So we really are putting a lot of effort in all the work in how do you implementing it. So we're working with many of the national governments to doing that. But procurement monitoring is one of the things. So it's the carrot and the stick, if you like. Um, we now constantly are monitoring the European Journal for large software tenders. Um, so today in your pack, I think there's a copy of the latest procurement monitoring report. And, and that is still showing that out of the 400 plus tenders that we looked at, some 13% are still potentially illegally using trademarks. And that, that figure hasn't changed one iota from last year. And I think that's the disappointing thing, is that we're not seeing any improvement in trend. We're also seeing some possibly questionable uses of negotiated procedures. And the thing for me is, is you can argue what's right or wrong, but for us, if you really want, we really want to see an open market, an open digital Europe, we must be looking really closely at this procurement activity. So we're delighted that the Commission actually are putting a lot of uh, effort into this work. But I guess it's one of our concerns is that there is a need to improve the efficiency of it, but if, we, if we're not careful, we could be throwing the baby away with the bathwater. So we very much plead when we're looking at that exercise is to just be looking at just how to protect the opportunity for SMEs and making sure that we don't continue with the lock-in. Um, we also, and we've had a lot of debate around this, is very much welcome the European Interoperability Framework. Now, there's a, an OFE person saying, you know, welcome the EIF. So um, thank you to Carol Devant, who I think is sitting in the room, you know. Uh, he, I think he turned a little bit whiter and uh, lost even more hair. But we very much applauded what has come out. But we also, I think, recognised, and, and Carol has heard me say this many times before, is that for us, I think the EIF is an aspirational document. And going back to this thing about procurement at national level, there is going to need to still to be a lot more detail to enable to really achieve the cross-European compatibility required and also the ability to deliver some of the details. So we're not going to let off at all on our pressure on open standards, and that's something that will be touched upon today. But I think, again, the stage is moved. We know what we're trying to achieve. It's just the best way of doing it. Um, last year, we also introduced the cloud um, very much as a concept, and we had a number of speakers starting to talk about that. And I think, no surprise, this is going to be one of the factors that actually runs through over the year into what we're doing. Um, for me, that was really fascinating is that some of you may remember we, two years ago we had Vince Cerf speaking. Um, and he came up with a phrase, and it's really good occasionally to have these sound bites, if you like, where he said, if it's not open, it's not the internet. Now, I think that was a great phrase, and that really summed up what we're trying to do. But for me, I'd love to see something as succinct for the cloud, because the cloud really is now taking off. It's moved beyond the, the hype cycle and actually moved now into reality. So we really need to get this momentum going. I absolutely applaud the work again of the Commission in the consultation, the work that's going on. I think we're already seeing some really good messages coming through that. But I think the one message I would say is, is the market is going to happen without that. So time is of the essence in doing it, so we really do need to move. Uh, the other area we introduced last year was around open data. And again, some of you remember Nigel Shadbolt speaking on that um, around from the UK on what was happening there. And that was fascinating because that really did fire up 
the interest, I think, many of the delegates, and there was a, an awful lot of feedback from this. So again, what's happening with the PSI directive is, is very important. And again, it's an area that for the conference we're going to be speaking a lot about. And I'm delighted that we've actually got Severin Norday from the French Prime Minister's office to redress the balance, because there was a lot of Brits talking in that area last year. So this time we have the, the French opportunity to do it. So I'm delighted that Severin has accepted to do that. We jointly with the Open Knowledge Foundation ran the Open Data Challenge earlier this year and Vice President Crowes uh, very kindly presented the prizes. We put that challenge together very quickly, um, but in a matter of weeks we had 440 entries from 23 countries. Now that is a fantastic achievement and it, to me it just signified what the opportunity is. And we, we used, we've used the internet as the exemplar for openness and the creation of innovation. Um, so it's a, I think actually open data is, is going to be as good as an exemplar as well. So in the past we've thought governments think, well they own this data, how could they get a return on the investment by selling it, by licensing that data. It's turned, it's changed. Now we're actually seeing the end result and the building of business and the, the entrepreneurial activity coming as a result of opening up that data. And I think that is potentially going to be as big as the internet in what we're talking about there. And entrepreneurs obviously is one of the focuses for today, um, and as is I think the whole issue of open government. So uh, in the last session I think we're going to have a really controversial session. Um, I hope so at least, make sure people are coming. So we're going to actually start putting in to test what this is all about. This is actually delivering something. So we've got two really good speakers uh, talking about e-environment and e-health, so actually looking at some of the vertical and the societal challenges. But I think we're also going to take both the consumer view and very much a highly controversial view on what do we really mean by openness in government. So we have one of the te top technology writers, I think, across the whole of Europe uh, to speak in that. So I speak very much in asking uh, government to lead and to challenge, and, but I think it's also fair that government should be asking industry to, be, to share that. So the work on the, the cloud is, I think, a good indication of how it can come together, and we've seen some really good benefits of that. But industry, I think, has got a long way to go. We've all seen in the recent weeks and months the, the debate around patents and the selling of patents from one company to other to protect the, the, what's happening in there. That to me just seems an incredibly waste of time and is that really helping to grow the market. So maybe this is one area where industry and government do need to come together. And just possibly there are a few things may be said about that later in the day. Um, but I spoke very much of leadership and courage and uh, Vice President Crozer said this before, we really have welcomed the intervention that she's made. We've welcomed the, the support that you've given as well. Um, I think I genuinely am really impressed with the progress that's been made on the digital agenda over the last year. Um, as Sachiko said, um, you, at the last uh, summit you offered to come back, so we're delighted you've accepted that challenge. And uh, can I introduce Vice President Crozer?